What we're going to talk about is cutting a length of jute material. That will be enough to have a double wrap or two wraps around a 12 inch tall reef prism, an equilateral triangle. This jute can be acquired from multiple sources. Um, I found Home Depot carries it kind of special order, but um, is one of the least expensive, especially if you go pick it up. There are multiple qualities of this that you can't really dictate a priori. And I've had anything from uh, a really nice uniform weave to something that's very loose and even to the point where some of this is rotten. And so that's something we need to keep an eye on. And I have a whole document that, that talks about that. We'll talk a little bit more about the jute when we um, get to that point. The color, a couple other tools you're going to need. You're going to need some means to cut the material. You can use regular scissors, but if you're going to do a lot in cutting, I highly recommend you invest in some sort of a electric um, cutters or clippers. This is actually a circular clipper, but um, it uh, works amazingly well, um, really saves on time and um, uh, hand strength uh, if that's uh, the issue. But either way, you're going to need some sort of cutting tool. You're also going to need a measuring device, some sort of marking tool, a magic marker or whatnot, and then masking tape. And masking tape um, is really important. This was actually an idea that came from one of our volunteers. The jute material has a very loose weave, and so after it's cut, it's very easily unraveled. And so this masking tape holds those um, uh, weft lines and... Um, uh, warp lines together uh, until we're able to actually set it up and wrap it around the prism. So very important. It doesn't have to be high quality masking tape. Cheapest stuff you can get is just fine, uh, but definitely some masking tape. All right. The other thing is some sort of a good work surface. So um, this is simply a sheet of plywood, four feet wide, eight feet long, that has a piece of um, uh, six mil sheet plastic on it. Um, that sheet plastic comes in handy for both having a kind of slippery surface for this jute material as we're cutting it to slide on versus say a wood surface which is very um, high friction and difficult to lay out. But we can use the same surface when it comes to actually laying out the jute, the JRCSA where we have the jute actually embedded in the concrete or the cement um, and we can use it with a squeegee and scrape off um, any residual cement. So having a good work surface, large surface is a really good thing. All right, let's get started. Let's put these off to the side. All right, now a little bit about um, the jute again. It comes in a four foot long roll. It is, this is a relatively new roll, so it's almost a one foot diameter um, when first purchased. But depending on where you store this material, you need to be very careful it doesn't pick up moisture. Now, um, I uh, don't store this inside. It's covered, so there's no direct rainfall on it, but it is exposed to humidity. Um, I was originally wrapping these in plastic, um, and that's a bad idea. What happens is there's residual moisture that is still in this um, fiber material. At night, as the plastic cools, that moisture on the inside actually condensates on the plastic and then it starts to accumulate or concentrate on one side of the jute and then that begins a rotting process. And that's really bad news because this is the strength of your concrete, at least initially. So we wanna keep this in good shape. So what I found is actually instead of wrapping it in something that is impervious to moisture um, um, transfer, I'm using a floating road cover material. So this is pervious in the sense that it will allow moisture to exchange back and forth. Um, relatively inexpensive material. Um, but the other thing is, is it does keep out insects. It does keep out um, mice or birds that might like to use this material for nesting material. So you want to protect this from critters, but you also want to be careful not to accumulate moisture on it. So that's why I left this on, just to give you a little example of how I keep this material in good shape. Next thing we're going to do is get our material lined up. Now, sometimes, if you're lucky, there is a um, cardboard core to these um, bolts um, that you can run a rod through and then set it up on a, a, um, a device that unravels it. I've found a lot of times those ends are crushed. It's difficult to get the, any sort of rod through, so I just roll it out. So what we're going to do is start off by having at least enough material or ample material on this end so we can meet, meet the outer edge. We're going to roll it down whoop, to our other end here. Now I've mentioned um, this is a 8 foot table, so 96 inches.
our mark is right here. Now this fabric has what are referred to as warp lines, which are the, the threads that go this direction, and weft lines, which are the ones that go perpendicular. Now what we wanna do is actually make our cut in between two weft lines. So we're cutting through the warp fibers, but we don't really wanna cut through the weft fiber. So we're gonna kinda of stretch this out a little bit. Here's our mark, and this is where our masking tape comes in. So what we're going to do is not worry about so much a perfectly perpendicular or square line. Instead, we want to follow that space between the two weft lines. So we're going to follow this line right here. All right, so we're going to take our tape and we're going to have about an extra inch. We're going to fold that underneath and then we're going to lay that out and just follow right down that weft line wherever it goes it goes right we go right it goes left we go left it doesn't have to be straight you just need to keep between that gap and when we get to the other end we're going to do the same thing we're going to cut it about an inch long and push that underneath all right so now we have our tape following between those two weft lines, and it might be easier to see it on this side, we see these are the two weft lines here and our tape is running right down the middle. So when we go to cut, the only thing we're cutting are the warp lines. The weft lines on either side are gonna stay intact. As I mentioned, you can use a pair of scissors, but you will essentially work at it. So, we have our electric shears here, and we're just going to run it right down the line of our masking tape and right between the two weft lines. And so now we are able to keep intact that edge from fraying. The last thing we have to do is fold this in a particular way so that we can more easily deal with it when we actually immerse it in the jute. And the way we're gonna do that is to first fold it in half. And this is folding it in half widthwise. This doesn't have to be perfect, but it's kind of an approximation. So we fold it in half once. So this would be four feet down to two feet. And then we fold it in half again. So now we're folding it down to a one foot width, and then we're just gonna roll it up. It's ready now to be immersed in the CSA and wrapped around the reef prism. But this part's done. This can be done well in advance, um, similar to keeping and protecting the roll. You might wanna keep these in an area that keeps them dry, not wet and out of the realm of critters. Um, but either way, this could be done well in advance by volunteers or uh, in preparation for a, a larger scale prism workup day. All right.